So today we're going to have a look at the options on the California coast. Uh, so we're going to start going through these uh, on video. So we're going to be doing another video shortly after this. Uh, so we're going to start today on the coast. Uh, we're going to do one on the ocean. Uh, we obviously will do one on the Grand on both models, uh, on the 600 and the 680. And then we hope to finish them off then with doing one on the California beach. Uh, so we'll take you through the whole range, uh, what's actually available, what's part of those option packages that's on there. Um, I'm going to go through off my ordering system, so rather than doing the actual price list of the brochure uh, that's there, I'm actually going to tell you what they are on my ordering system and go through and say, right, these are the options which you can have. Um, these are the ones which I think uh, you know you probably are a must to have really, uh, and ones that uh, obviously are, are, are whether you want them or not that's on there. So anyway, so let's get straight into it. So the first thing obviously if you look at the coast you've only got one engine choice so it's the 150 PS DSG vehicle uh, so that makes it a little bit easier to start with. Um, colour wise uh, we've done a couple of videos on colours and things in the past. Um, I've come to the conclusion now there is no bad colours uh, on California. Uh, pricing wise and things like that that they uh, there are some colours which are more popular than others um, but really I think it's whatever colour that, that you prefer that you think is best for you as well. So, But the other choices is your interior fabric. So there are two options. You can have your cloth interior seats that's there or you can upgrade to the art of the law. The middle insert is a suede material in the insert uh, and then you've got the leather look on the outside which is like a leatherette material uh, that's in there as well. Now those obviously comes in the same kind of colour that you would normally have in there so it'd be a, a darkish grey colour that's there. Now that option in itself is £1,200 £248, uh, which is quite a lot, um, and I think personally, I think on something like the Coast, uh, it's quite a lot to add in uh, to there as well. It's not going to give you full leather. Um, obviously, all it's giving you there is, is just the suede inserts in there. It is nice, I do, it is nice to sit on, but whether or not that's something that, uh, that you feel you need anyway. Uh, other options, obviously, from there is you could then actually have leather fitted afterwards. Uh, and maybe at some point we might do a video on, on aftermarket leather because there are a few companies that, uh, that we use. Well, there's one company we primarily use for doing leather afterwards for, for customers. Um, and maybe at some point we'll do a video on, uh, on some of the things that they do. Might be quite handy. If you'd like to see that video, pop it in the comments box below as well and we can have a look at it from there. So the first real option that comes to on my, my side of it on the configurator when I'm actually pricing a vehicle up uh, this way and actually getting to order it uh, is talking about the roof bellows so quite a new addition to the California coast is the ability to order it now with a window in the very front of your uh, front of the canvas so it's basically having the canvas that you get standard with the ocean you can upgrade to have on the coast. Uh, the option of that is a £270 option uh, it's one that I would now start to order most of my stock vehicles that come through I think because for £270 uh, it seems like a bit of a bargain actually to get that. Uh, but it just depends on where you're going to use your vehicle whether you prefer or prefer not to have that. Um, so moving on, uh, seating. So come standard with four seats in the coast. Do you need an extra seat? Uh, I've said this many times, this fifth seat is for during the week. Uh, so if you, uh, you need to carry extra people that's there, you do need to fully remove that seat to make the bed downstairs. Uh, and obviously then you'd have to store that seat somewhere while you're using that bed. But you do kind of have two options within that rail. So you've got the actual seat itself, which is £474, uh, but you can just specify the extra rail in the floor. So uh, that's £84 for that extra rail, so that will give you three rails in the uh, floor plan uh, of the vehicle and that would allow you then at a later stage to actually go and uh, purchase a seat to put in there to upgrade it to uh, those extra those extra seating. Uh, now you can't buy that seat from Volkswagen so you can't walk into a Volkswagen dealer and go can I have the fifth seat please? Uh, it's not a part that's audible. Uh, we'd have to buy all the individual parts for it. I think the last time we looked it was about three, three and a half thousand pound to buy all the individual bits. Uh, but the people do sell them on eBay and uh, and places like that as well that they've taken them out of vehicles and things. So it is something you could do later on, uh, but I think you'd need your best bet is to make a decision from the start. 
Do you need a fifth seat or do you not need a fifth seat? So next up is alloy wheels. Uh, so you get 16 inch uh, standard wheels uh, that come with the vehicle. And then you've got the upgrade to upgrade those to 17 and then to 18 inch uh, alloy wheels. Uh, if you stay with 17s, you get a spare wheel. If you change to the 18s, you don't get a spare wheel. Um, now wheel choice is a very personal thing. Um, I'm not going to get involved with which wheels I think are best and which wheels are from in here. Uh, it's whatever you feel is best whether you want to do from whether you want to change those wheels or not. I'd probably say though if you were obviously from the factory perspective they only do 18 as the most. You can get bigger wheels than that. Uh, you can do those aftermarket and we do sell Volkswagen do 20s as well that come after there. But then you are looking at one you're definitely going to need to lower the vehicle uh, and obviously you are changing the characteristics of the vehicle. It does give you a lot harder ride as well. So probably something worth thinking about. Uh, whether you want to get that bigger alloy in the first place, whether that spare wheel makes a difference to you or not uh, with the wheels in which you're choosing. So you've got two choices of navigation systems with the California Coast. Uh, so you've got the upgrade which is standard in the ocean uh, and the cost on that is £1,338. Um, alternatively you can go for the full uh, screen, the bigger screen with no buttons on there which you've seen in a lot of the videos as well uh, and that's 1734. Um, <clears throat> you've seen my, I've made lots of comments on the navigation systems before. I personally don't think it's a well worth investment on the coast. Uh, I just think it's a lot of money that you're spending. Uh, by the time you've, you've spent that you're getting more and more close to that ocean territory uh, which as I said has this the oceans are standard, uh, so it's got the uh, the smaller navigation screen is standard, and the bigger one you can upgrade again on the ocean. It's about six hundred odd pound um, to upgrade it to that bigger one as well. So uh, if that is something you're looking at, I think personally again, not for everybody, because some people will prefer to have the coast and, and spec it all out because maybe they want a manual roof rather than electric. Uh, but I think for the majority of people, is it that's probably something that uh, that you'll probably save if you're going for an ocean. And that neatly brings us on to digital cockpit. Again, this is something which is standard in the ocean model uh, and you can upgrade it, but you do need to include it within one of those satellite navigation systems. So you've got that and the cost of the screen as well. And it's £468 for the digital dash. Uh, I think digital dash is lovely. It's brilliant. Uh, it looks really nice. It's on there, but it's a very, very big expense on a coast by the time you've added that and the, uh, and the option of navigation in as well. I uh, get lots of questions about this option, storage net. What's storage net? Um, well, storage net is, is an option. Basically, when you pull your, uh, your cover back to give you access to your roof section that's in there, you have a net which is supported from either side. So when you're uh, camping, for example, you could have food or fruit and things like that put into the side of it uh, that's in there. You have to take everything out when you put the roof down, uh, and that's what's part of the storage net. But the thing that most people are buying the storage net for uh, as an option is actually because you get an additional draw uh, on your dual passenger seat uh, in the back. So as you may or may not know, you've got one really big drawer that's in there and then at the side uh, you've got what we often referred to as the ski hatch. Uh, so it's a little plastic cap which you can pull off and then you can get long poles all the way through your vehicle. Um, so if you go for the storage option, uh, you actually you lose that cap and that becomes a drawer. So you've got two pull out drawers. Uh, so it's fairly popular, um, not so much I don't think for the, uh, the actual net itself which is above the, uh, the cab that's in there and I do know a few people have actually removed it um, <laughs> just because it plays with your head as you're sitting there in the, uh, uh, the seats but, but primarily it's for the other one that's in there. So uh, the cost of that is £210, uh, so not a huge cost in, in the scheme of things uh, but it is one of those. If you do have the extra pull out drawer that's there you lose the ability to put any long things uh, through there so if you're doing any water sports you might have something longer to put through uh, obviously you do from there uh, it was always traditionally a ski hatch because uh, obviously your skis for example if you go skiing you can onto them in the vehicle as well. We're going to move on to lighting for the vehicle this is external lighting there's three options which come in within this category uh, so you've got LED headlights is for one uh, LEDs are £1,290 if you've driven with and without uh, LEDs before uh, bearing in mind that the coast now comes with the better headlights so it's got H7 headlight bulbs uh, standard so it actually the headlights are pretty good as standard uh, but the LEDs obviously give you a lot more brightness uh, that's on the road as well uh, again this is one of the options that I think if it's one I don't order it on slot vehicles LEDs uh, on the coast but uh, if it's something that you think you'd want it to that's on there because it is standard again with the ocean uh, so the LEDs are standard that's on there with that uh, and the two other parts I'd say from that are front fog lights 
uh, which I have in the past advised for front fog lights. Changing my opinion a little bit, uh, one because the cost actually is £426 for those fog lights um, and they're not as noticeable as they used to be between the 6 and the 6.1 uh, but I do quite like fog lights myself uh, that's there so that's a, one of those options, do you not do you have it uh, that's there and then high beam control uh, which effectively that is if you've got your main beams on and the car's coming towards you you can automatically sense it and turn them off as well um, so that's kind of an assistance one again that's not something I generally order on a stock vehicle the next couple of options are actually quite simple and quick ones to, to go through. So you've got a mini flashlight. Uh, if any of you have seen this before, we must at some point I'll need a vehicle that's here um, and actually show you what this actually is. Uh, but it's basically the mini flashlight about that big uh, and it sits behind the driver's seat and it allows you to illuminate the floor a little bit but obviously pop it out and use it as a flashlight. Uh, fairly expensive flashlight at £84, um, but if you want it, you want it. If you don't want it, you don't want it. Um, that's there. Um, now we move on to active lane assist. Uh, now active lane assist, if you've ever had uh, a vehicle that has active lane assist, uh, effectively what it's doing is it's monitoring where you are on a motorway for example or a dual carriageway uh, and if it feels that you're moving out without indicating uh, you'll get resistance on the wheel and it kind of like bumps you back in. Uh, it's quite a good system I think. Um, it can be depending on how you drive etc. You need to remember obviously always to indicate out and indicate back in uh, unless it was moving you from in there as well. Uh, so that's, that's one that's on there. Uh, again is an option £1,368 uh, standard on an ocean. Um, so again you're moving back up towards the, uh, the higher cost that's there as well. A relatively new option which we have I think talked about before which is the driver assistance pack plus uh, and what this is, is it puts a lot of other things in uh, into one package so in that package you get the navigation system uh, with the vehicle um, you also get uh, traffic sign recognition and the active lane assist as well and high beam assist uh, as with all these packages as long as you want everything that's in it it's cheaper to buy the package um, but if there are things in the package you don't want then it's just cheaper to buy the individual uh, items that come through. So parking sensors are standard front and rear uh, but you do have the option of adding park assist uh, which is parallel parking for you uh, so it'll actually park the vehicle for you so you drive past somewhere it uses the parking sensors on the vehicle uh, and then uh, obviously all you need to do then is pop it into reverse and you move the vehicle but you don't touch the steering wheel and the steering wheel does its movement and gets you into a car park space. Uh, I have used it before, I've not actually used it on a transporter actually, I've used it on a different vehicle, I uh, thought it was quite good. Um, it's not a huge option at £342 uh, for the vehicle. Um, I suppose if you use it once and it helps, it probably helps it's on there. Again, it's not something I usually put on a stock vehicle. Uh, but one thing I do definitely put on a stock vehicle is a rear view camera. Uh, I think rear view camera uh, is a really, really good option uh, for lots of different reasons. Uh, you know, if you're reversing out people walking behind you in the vehicle, you haven't seen them, objects that don't necessarily get picked up by the, uh, the parking sensors, if, there is, if it's a raised one that's coming out from there. So, uh, and the cost of the, um, uh, of the rear camera is £294, so not a huge cost. So I definitely think it's worthwhile, uh, the rear camera. Traffic sign recognition is to do with the navigation system that's in the vehicle and again that's monitoring traffic signs so if it sees for example a 30 sign and you're in a 40 uh, that will then obviously tell the dash. Next two options is to do with trailer assist. Uh, now if you're not used to reversing and you have to reverse, uh, reversing with any, any vehicle, reversing a trailer on the back of a caravan, anything like that, uh, it is an art form. Um, I can do it just about. Um, not particularly well. Um, I'll be honest, I think I said this before, my, my family are big caravans, but my parents have been caravanning for years. Uh, my dad is an expert at how to uh, reverse with a, uh, with a caravan on the back of it. I've watched him do it many times and thinking I have no idea what I'm doing. So, but Trailer Assist does all this for you. Uh, it's very, very good. It monitors the vehicle behind you um, and reverses it for you safely. Uh, so it's a really good system. I think probably you need to know both. You need to be able to do it and not do it. Uh, but it is something that's there which does help with those uh, with the with reversing that's on there as well. So uh, it's definitely a good option. Um, it's not something I would order for stock. It will only suit, suit certain people uh, that's there. But it's definitely worth doing. So uh, the standard one is £660. So not a huge cost that's there. Uh, but again, you can add it as well, which includes a rear camera and side protection at £912. So I said it's not something I would use the order for stock on a coast, um, but obviously there is uh, the options that's there. Obviously, if you've got trailer assist, you're going to probably need a tow bar as well. Uh, so again, tow bar options. Uh, so we've got tow bar preparation. 
Uh, all that Toolbar Preparation does is it gives you a socket, uh, which isn't a socket like you would think. It's not a socket you can plug your trailer board into. Uh, it's a socket which lives behind the water tanks. And all that allows us to do then is actually to retrofit uh, the tow bar and the cabling into the back of the vehicle without having to reroute all of the cabling to the front. To give you an idea, if you haven't got trailer preparation, uh, we need about an additional four hours to do all the uh, work to get the cables from the back to the front of the vehicle to actually fit uh, a tow bar that's in there. So, uh, so it's, quite, it's quite a good option that's there if you think you're going to need a tow bar at some point. Not sure. Alternatively, just order it with a tow bar in the first place. Uh, so preparations, £264, and the tow bar itself uh, for detachable, which includes all that, is 768 The option of first aid kit, warning triangle and safety vest, uh, which is £60. Uh, some, of that th some of those things, by the way, you're not just getting all those as standard because some of those you already get with in the vehicle. Uh, the main thing you're actually getting really is a safety vest. Uh, three options which I don't think are hugely important but you can have them on. Uh, so you've got an increase of uh, fuel tank. So fuel tank is standard 70 litres, you can increase it to 80 litres, uh, just gives you an extra 10 litres. Um, not really, I don't think, lots of people order it for, for, for one reason or other but uh, I don't really think it really adds a huge amount of, uh, of difference to the vehicle but again it's not a huge cost, £78 for that. That's there. Uh, we've got driver select. Uh, so driver select allows you to change the chassis control of the vehicle so you can have it for example on a sports mode or on a comfort mode uh, and obviously then it just tightens and, and decreases the dampeners on the vehicle uh, to give you a slightly better ride uh, that's on there. Very expensive option, £1,458. As I'm sure you can appreciate, it's not something I would order on a, uh, for, you know, for a stock vehicle or for the average uh, order that we're doing. Uh, electric side door, uh, this is one you either want one or you don't want one. Uh, there's no right or wrong for that. I don't order it for a stock vehicle, uh, mainly because of the, again the cost, it's £378. Uh, and basically this is the electric door, so if you pull up somewhere, press a button on your dash, door open, people get in, press a button on it shuts again. Um, obviously if you're in camping side, you generally turn the electric side of it off, especially at night because it would actually bleep as it opens and shuts. Uh, on the new ones now, on the 6.1, I think it bleeps three times, I think, uh, where I think on the 6 it used to bleep continuously as it, uh, as it was actually closing, that's, uh, closing the door that's on as well, so either you want it or you don't want it. Wooden floor with plastic lining. Is it a wooden floor? No, it's not wood, it's plastic. It gives you the wood effect that's on there. Uh, it looks really nice. You've seen lots of videos, the one we've got on our showroom has the wood effect that's there as well. Uh, probably not necessarily animal friendly, I don't think, because it's a little bit softer than the normal floor that's, uh, that's in the vehicle. Uh, cost on that is £498, uh, so it's quite a, a large expense. It's uh, yeah, not something I would order for the stock, but it does look nice. It does look nice in the vehicle. Now we've got another option which is standard on the coast, and this is the Climatronic. Uh, the air conditioning system, the heating system within the vehicle. So uh, obviously all your, your cooling comes from the front of the vehicle on the coast. On the ocean model, uh, it's a three zone, so you can separate it out between driver, passenger and the rear. Uh, and obviously you've got vents in the rear, which you, so on the coast you have no vents in the rear at all. It's all at the front of the cab, and in the ocean you've got it in the rear. Uh, again, this is one of those options that I tend to try and tend to say more look at the ocean because it's standard in that model, and the price on that is £990. Uh, so if you're adding these up as you go along on the ones that I'm saying, you know, coast and ocean, uh, you can soon get to see why in actual fact that all of a sudden you start adding things on. The ocean looks a lot more attractive uh, as a price because you're getting lots of these extras for it with obviously you're not paying for the, the whole cost of those as you move up. Uh, now a really good option uh, for the coast I think, and I think it's something that most people would order, uh, is privacy glass. Uh, so the privacy glass, we've done a recent video on, on privacy glass, we've shown the differences uh, between the two that's on there, uh, but the privacy glass option uh, is £354, uh, so I think that's a really good value for money, and I think it certainly adds a lot uh, to the vehicle as well. Um, obviously some people don't like privacy glass, they just prefer it to be the normal glass and that's, that's fine, but uh, I generally order privacy glass on all of my stock vehicles. Uh, and then also on glass side of it we've got the heated front windscreen, it's £498. Um, the positive sides of each windscreen are obviously, if it's the windscreen's frozen, pop your heated windscreen on, put your vehicle on, obviously it defrosts the vehicle etc, it's all really really good. Uh, I suppose from a negative perspective if there had to be one, it's obviously the cost of replacing it, uh, they're a lot more expensive uh, than what they were. The black awning is standard, you can get the silver awning as an optional extra upgrade for £228. Uh, I've said it before in some of the videos as well, if you're having a two tones, you add white, 
Uh, I think it does look a lot better if it's in the silver, if you have the white top. Um, but other than that, uh, it goes very, I think it looks a nice contrast in black. Uh, if you, especially if you've got things, obviously you've got privacy glass, you've got your darkened windows, and you've got your, uh, your dark one as well there. But a bit of a personal thing, but as I said, you get the awning as standard anyway, it's just whether you want to upgrade to that extra one. Uh, two things I get asked quite a bit about again on here. One is the upgraded battery uh, and increased alter, alternator capacity. Uh, so what you actually get with that, the alternator, as far as I'm aware, isn't, isn't increased. It's, that's just the description that's in there because you've got the bigger alternator anyway with it being the camper van. Uh, but what you are getting is that bigger starter battery. Uh, an advantage of that uh, that bigger battery, obviously, is that the vehicle, in theory, the, the battery would last longer because it's got a lot more charge in it. Uh, it bumps it up to a 92 amp hour battery. I mentioned this in a previous video. Uh, and the actual reason for the design of it, I'm, in, I'm informed. So, Donald, thank you very much for uh, pointing this out to me. It's more to do with the stock starting so it's actually come over from the the van world uh, so with a lot of uh, multi-drop customers and things like that obviously the vehicles get stop started a lot more often than what they would normally do and so a bigger battery is a lot better uh, for that which makes a lot of sense as well uh, that's there so uh, kind of two different variations of it uh, not so much the stop starting with the camper van uh, but you do get a bigger battery um, do I think it's needed probably not realistically um, but obviously if you know if you felt you needed it, it would be uh, probably something you could have Right, you'll be glad to know we're getting towards the end now because uh, it's going on quite long because there's quite a lot of options that's on here as well. Uh, so we're moving on to interior light concept. Uh, now the interior light concept is £726 uh, and what you get for that effectively is the lights in the upper cabin uh, for the uh, for the bed so it's a um, normally you'd um, in the coast you don't get any lighting in the in the upper bed section you just got it on a uh, you got a plug-in which you can into a 12 volt socket to give you lights up there and what that would do then is it give you the same lighting that you have in the ocean because the ocean has this as standard uh, and that would obviously put the uh, the lights over there uh, four keys Four keys is four keys, uh, £120 for those two extra keys. Uh, a normal key to replace it, one of the ones is about £150, uh, so quite well worth it if you think you need more keys. Uh, I suppose it might be convenient if there's multiple people using the vehicle, it might be quite handy to have those extra keys. Bed extension with comfort mattress. Uh, this is a really good option. I think this is I'm not entirely sure why it's not standard, if I'm honest, because uh, I think it's really, really good. I don't know why you'd want it without it. You've got your bed downstairs, you pull your comfort mattress across, and it just make it does I think it makes a whole world of difference that's in the vehicle on the back of it as well. Uh, so and cost on that on the bed extension is £318. I think it's well worth money, uh, well spent that's on there as well. Uh, mud flaps, I'm not going to speak about mud flaps a lot. If you're used to watching the channel, uh, you'll know my thoughts on, on mud flaps. Everybody has an opinion on mud flaps, so mud flaps and mud flaps, £162.4. Uh, they can be retrofitted later on, uh, but they are nicer if they are do come from the factory because they're not actually screwed in, they're, they're fitted from in there. Outdoor shower connection, uh, so the outdoor shower connection, uh, I think we've done videos on this before, uh, we'll probably need to do another one soon, actually, we'll actually get one working, show how it works. Uh, this comes out the back of the vehicle, uh, that's in there so uh, that actually is 348 pound uh, sometimes you see it has cupboards in bright oak uh, with outdoor shower connection that's the exact uh, description of what that uh, what that is that's on there um, you either do or don't want that as i said it's not a shower you generally would stand under unless you wanted to wash yourself off quickly from the beach for example which is kind of what it's designed for or wash the dog or a bike or something like that uh, that's really what it's kind of walk for because it is cold water as well that comes on from the back and then final, final option uh, is heated seats. And again, heated seats, not something to order for stock, uh, but it is a nice thing to have, and it is standard again on the Ocean model. I don't get time anymore now really to spend with customers actually in the showroom and going through these options now. My colleagues tend to do that, uh, they say, but when I was doing that, uh, I tended to have the brochure out. So you might find, for example, it's quite helpful if you are watching this video and looking at your options on the coast. Uh, you could pause it and go through the brochure at the same time as well and deciding which options you actually want and you don't want. I uh, hope we've explained those options to you fully as well. If there's any questions or queries you've got, uh, put them in the comments box below if there's anything you'd like a bit more information on. So I hope you've managed to stay awake for the whole length of this video as well, going through it. Uh, just me talking in here. Uh, hopefully next week when we do uh, next video outside, maybe we'll be outside. Uh, weather in Liverpool today is not very good, so we're, uh, we're stuck inside for the moment today. So if you don't subscribe, please subscribe. Uh, any questions, queries, put them in the box below. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like. It really does help the channel, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.